Yeah, thank you for your warm welcome. Uh, and hello, everyone. My name is Camilla, and I founded LACMUS. At LACMUS, we, we build data models that simulate how people make decisions, what kind of things they buy next, how they think, feel, and behave. And we are not doing this by wrapping another ChatGPT API, but we are building for getting accurate results that will deliver instant answers, instant results, in unlimited scope, basically, you can ask anyone anything, anytime, without compromising the quality of the data. And with that, we are building these data models based on neurosymbolic AI to make market research affordable. Because today, it is not. Today, market research is a luxury. And it is something that we discovered two years ago when we mapped how 20 large European companies actually map their markets and how they ask for opinions. We mapped 20 companies from Paqueta, which is a Czech delivery company, to all the way up to Microsoft, and we discovered that only a fraction of the decisions have the information about the consumers for the stakeholders to make the right decisions subsequently. And this is true for teams in marketing, for advertisement, for PR people, for services, for products. People do not have enough data about the consumer to be confident that they are doing the right job. So for every, every decision that is now supported with market research and with collecting opinions from online panels or offline panels, there are four decisions that are based on guesswork. And the trend is even more prominent when we look at our first companies that started working, working with us, especially in banking and automotive. And they started doing 12 times more research when they adopted our tool, our AI panel, that answers their questions about their target groups anytime, whatever question they want. What the customer sees, actually, are two models. They can either choose to ask in this like in-depth interview model, uh, where they can practically chat with the perfect persona that is also tied to their strategic goals, or they can run full-scale surveys in any, or in any target group they actually want to. So they first can customize uh, their own model with their data. They can configure precisely the target group based on hundreds of attributes. And in the results, they see the distribution of who thinks what, and also um, short, com short comments about why people think this choice would be appropriate for them. They also get sample individual answers to power the why, the curiosity behind this behavior that they see. I mentioned that the main differentiator between us and just prompting to GPT is the accuracy. And this is something that we are overwhelmingly uh, interested in. So we are building our, our models based on neurosymbolic AI. To be frank, it is just a buzzword for a lot of math and a lot of probability, and we are great at it. So what happens when you ask a question in our model? It first gets to the analytical core, where we compute the answer. And only then it travels through our large language model that was specifically trained just to take this information and translate it into something that humans can work with efficiently, like jobs to be done, um, without distorting the results that got computed analytically. In that, we are using a mishmash of, of different analyses from your neural networks to simple trend analyses because we do not need to push AI wherever it is just not, uh, not needed there. OK. So you have data models that simulate how your target groups make decisions, and the data you get from it are accurately describing the preferences of your target groups. What do you do with that? Consider TED. Ted is your average marketing guy, and his job is to create an ad campaign that would um, resonate with the target audience for the next quarter. Today, what Ted would do is to go for an agency and then ask an online panel. And 
In this sense, Ted is very lucky because 20 years ago, he wouldn't be even able to go for online panels. He would actually do uh, phone calls and probably sending out uh, surveys and envelopes. So today, he would choose an online panel. Um, but the problem is that online panels are expensive and very slow. And it's not about the data collection. The data collected in online panels is a matter of hours. The problem is that when today Ted wants to inform his campaign and he has the need for the opinions, he only gets the opinion six months later until or after, after it goes through the approval rounds that are necessary for such a large expense because today asking people through agencies or without is very expensive. And the options that he has today are also not great because it doesn't give him the type of information he actually needs to target his campaign now uh, for the right audience. When Ted has a data model that simulates in silico how people will react, what are their worries, what are, what are their motivations, he can just unlimit, without limits, he can just ask what is it that the consumer wants to read, what kind of services they want to buy. In a sense, we are fulfilling the marketeer's dreams because all marketeers, I gather, uh, would love to start living in their customers' heads. And this is not only achieved with interviews and surveys, but they can efficiently monitor media with our tool, or they can configure how their customer base will respond in, 20 th uh, in 2030, for example. As a result, Ted knows how his target group actually behaves. And thanks to that, he can create the perfect ad that would resonate the most with the target group he really wants to capture. And the beautiful thing is that Ted is not the only person in the company that can use it. All the client-facing roles have this advantage with our tool. And this could be true for design, for sales, for innovation, uh, for strategy. When a company knows 10 times more information about their target group and about the consumers, they can move 10 times faster and more efficiently. So now they do not really need to guess. Just as our current clients do not need to guess what their target group actually thinks, how they feel, how they will behave next, what they will buy next. Um, so far this year, we have answered over 10,000 questions. This was, uh, this was the result out of the last month, and we are active across six verticals, banking, automotive, energy, beauty, fast food, and telco. And our goal is not to make offline or online panels obsolete, but we believe that we can truly enrich the infrastructure we are having here, because we see that the hunger for more insights is there. And what I believe we are seeing is just the same story from 20 years ago repeat itself. If you just think about this, 20 years ago when the internet was booming, we started seeing online panels and everyone was really scrutinizing how online panels are accurate or better than just sending out envelopes and making a phone call. Today, I feel for the era of AI, the only logical step is to move again from online panels to AI panels. And of course, the debate on accuracy is of high relevance because if you have random insights, it will have random results. And this is probably not the risk that most companies would be comfortable with taking. Um, our tech is proprietary, so it is based with accuracy on mind, and this is of utmost importance for us. We are also aiming at the process, so we are not really trying to make the data collection that takes hours more efficient, but we really want to increase the frequency, how companies think about collecting opinions from their customers. And I believe we are the right team to do that. Uh, we are currently a team of 20-ish uh, Gen Z experts in AI, in data science, in behavioral science. Um, 
As you heard in my lovely introduction, I won my first prize for behavioral science when I was 17. My co-founder, Jan, lectured about his proprietary AI tech and research at Oxford as an undergrad. And really, the team is full of these wonderful people. Um, so far, uh, we managed to get our tool running in uh, B2B SaaS in enterprises from banking, automotive, telco. Uh, we now got the product finished, but let's be honest, it's probably never going to be finished because there's always something to innovate. And in Q1, we are going for our seed round. Uh, of 2 million and we want to expand to LATAM and APAC. We already have negotiations there, so wish us luck. Thank you, everyone.